I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. So imagine this. You have a routine medical procedure, let's say a colonoscopy. You're insured and your doctor is in network. But then you get an unexpected bill. That's exactly what happened to a woman who got a COVID test in an emergency room and then ended up with a $6,000 bill because the test went to an outside lab not covered by her insurance. The Journal of the American Medical Association found that one in five patients were hit with an out-of-network charge after having surgery. These bills can set you back hundreds, even thousands of dollars. 50% of Americans are actually carrying some medical debt right now, which of course can make paying those bills and managing the regular expenses seem almost impossible. Well, relief arrived on January 1st in the form of a new law. The No Surprises Act bans many of these surprise bills. Katie Keith is a researcher at the Center on Health Insurance Reforms at Georgetown University. Katie Keith, so nice to have you. Thank you for talking with me. So we know that the No Surprises Act went into effect on January 1st. Walk us through the basic features of this legislation and what exactly it does. What the No Surprises Act means is that those with private health insurance shouldn't face what we call surprise out-of-network bills anymore. And what I mean when I say surprise out-of-network bills, this is really for patients who do everything right. If you, if you schedule some kind of service, you make sure that the folks who are going to see you are in-network. I would expect that my anesthesiologist would be in-network. I didn't choose that doctor. You know, maybe you're in an emergency, you can't pick the hospital you're going to or the physician you're going to see. Uh, you're taken simply to the nearest emergency room and then you have a surprise bill that lands, you know, in your mail. And these bills um, can range anywhere from hundreds of dollars to, you know, five figures. So we gave an example in your introduction about a woman who, who got a COVID test, went to the ER, didn't realize that it was sent to a lab out of network, had this multi-thousand dollar fee. How, how common is that? In general, um, there's estimates that one in five uh, hospital visits results in one of these out-of-network bills. So will this legislation then just end that? No more surprise bills? The only exception where you might see one of these bills is if you're taken by a ground ambulance. It, it tends to be a little bit more complicated. Some of them are owned by cities and counties. Um, there were several reasons why Congress didn't take that on, but we are starting to see some action at the state level. So if you look at how health care costs have been rising, now I think it's like 37 states people there are paying 10% of uh, their median income is going to healthcare costs. And it seems to me to be both crazy and, and, and unsustainable. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I would emphasize, I think that 10% figure that you're giving, I, I think that's for premiums and deductibles. So for folks who were receiving these surprise bills, they were paying even more than that for, again, costs that they didn't even anticipate. So then what's the best strategy to lower healthcare costs? In the United States, we just pay so much more for health care than many other countries. It's sort of the it's the price is stupid. And so, um, you know, we're paying so much more. It's about 20 percent of our GDP, which means, you know, a fifth of our economy is driven by health care. I think over time, it's going to be looking at those prices um, that people are actually being charged. It's going to be probably a, a focus on value based care, making sure we're actually getting those outcomes for the amount that we're investing. Um, but it's going to take a lot of work. Is there anything that you see on the horizon where you could at least have some consistency in costs, right? That, that even in you know, neighborhoods, communities close to each other, a, a procedure, the cost of a procedure can vary wildly. Yeah, absolutely. Or even if it's not consistent costs, we should know what it is up front so you can be you know, an informed decision maker and then um, go to the place you want to go to. And so one, one initiative that is sort of slowly rolling out is a new transparency initiative. So this is a requirement that hospitals in particular and insurance companies have to sort of tell and show the prices that they charge for different things, um, including their negotiated rates. The question I think is, will people use that information? Um, some types of healthcare is sort of shoppable like that. You can look it up before you go. Not all healthcare is, and so we'll at least have a little bit more insight into exactly what those prices are, so it's less of a black box uh, for everybody. Katie Keith from the Center on Health Insurance Reforms, thank you so much, appreciate your time.